Uh, very proud of our team in the Wake Forest game. The way uh, our defense really stepped up, I thought really did a great job the overall game. Very few missed tackles, great job of leveraging the ball, crushing the quarterback, creating turnovers, dictating the tempo of the game from the outset. Uh, I thought the special teams also did a great job, except for one just kick that Norberto let slip away out of bounds. Otherwise, kickoffs were great, coverage were great. They had one little return on the first and they got a little field position. But kind of set the tone, pinning them back. Uh, did a great job in covering the kicks, returning kicks, had a good kickoff return, had a great punt return to set up a, uh, a score or two uh, in the uh, first half. Uh, guys did a real nice job overall, kicked the ball. Kaysen had a great one that we let get away, should have been down on the four yard line where we actually just dropped. He does about as good a job as anybody I've ever been around as far as dropping that ball inside the 10 or five yard line on those kicks. Uh, doing an outstanding job there. Uh, offense had two turnovers in the first drive that uh, run characteristics, moved the ball well. Uh, just not sustained enough. Uh, first time, first interception, we've got to flatten that route off a little bit, be about an inch and a half outside with it. Guy got his fingertips on it, made a good play. And we got to flatten that out and get the ball outside just a hair. Second one, we just dropped the ball. Carlos just dropped the ball, and he made a nice cut. Then, uh, of course, sustained the injury to Barron, and uh, I thought Ryan Hofield did an outstanding job, in my opinion, <coughs> of coming in and, you know, get, after the first couple plays, getting his feet on the ground, a couple high snaps, but we, get, we gathered him, and just his calls, his blocking, did an outstanding job up front blocking, and then we got in a little rhythm, started moving the football, and we were able to score. And very proud that we were able to score right before the half. Got a touchdown before the mm -hmm. half, and then we were able to pin them back, get three and out, use the timeouts. Got a, you know, pin them back, got in two minutes before the half, got a nice field goal, had a chance for a touchdown. We make the play, we're just inches off. That was the thing, we was inches off on about three plays all night, just off fingertips, or we dropped it, you know, could have been an outstanding night. But that's the way offense goes sometimes. Uh, come out the second half, started the first drive, got points. Defense set the tone again by getting turnovers and getting that, and then we scored again on offense. So I'm very proud of the young receivers coming out and playing when uh, uh, Rashad Green was not in the second half. That was still a 13-3 ball game, and they come out and execute extremely well. Ermin Lane, uh, Travis Rudolph, I thought Bobo really stepped up. You know, Christian Green, Kermit, those Scooter Higgins had a nice vertical catch you know, in the first half. Good to get him back in the mix. And I thought those guys did an outstanding job of stepping up and accepting the role in that, in that, in that responsibility in that part of the game. Very pleased with their performance. Uh, now it's going to get ready for a Syracuse team. We think it's a very good team. Uh, on defense, they do a great job. Blitz multiple packages, different looks, different 3-3 three, three packages, four down, nickel dime packages. Do a really good job offensively. Uh, very multiple in what they do. I know they just sustained a, a key injury to their quarterback, so that'll change things. We'll have to you know, guess a little bit about how they're going to do things on offense. They change offensive coordinators so that, you know, that, from that standpoint. But kicking game, they're very sound. And that's always an extremely tough pace to play. It's a different kind of noise when you go in the dome than outside noise. It's totally different. Uh, and we'll be, there'll be a good atmosphere and they'll be waiting on us like everybody else. So we need to get better, keep improving, and uh, keep progressing along. Questions, please? Jimbo, any update on Rashad? You know Rashad, no. He, uh, response today was really good. Not the lingering effects, but he still has to go through a protocol and a step process to come back or whatever happens in that regard. And uh, once we know it was brought to our, our attention and we got him out there at halftime. He came in at halftime, said he felt a little dizzy, and threw up there once, and they checked him, said, yeah, there could be something there. So it's sustained probably toward the end of the second half, the first half right there. But he played every, you know, sometimes it'll come afterwards. I don't know. I don't know. That's what was brought to our attention. And but we communicated with him every time on off the field, and there was no, never saw him get hit or anything like that. But he had the, the symptoms of a concussion, and so he had a concussion. Now he'll go through the protocol and having. Our Dr. Burkhardt here, I mean, that's, that's tremendous. We have an expert here, so feel very comfortable with the hands he's in. He'll make all those decisions. And he seems maybe better than the two Mario's did after the Clemson game? Has, according to uh, when they examined him, they do it every day. Had less self, didn't have the headaches and the vision and a lot of those things. But you, those things, I've seen them, they, they say one day they're real good, the next day they'll, they'll affect later. The effects will come later. Or some guys, like Kenny Shaw at time, I remember Kenny had one one time, and after about four or five days, he was fine. I think every person's different, and every one of them's different. And that's why we hired that expert to make sure we got somebody down there. We don't take any chances with their careers or lives. How much of a game changer is your kicker, knowing that, you know, Who's that? Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, how much of a game changer is it, why, when you know that you have that kind of leg? Well, it does, big time. I mean, not only points wise, but we don't realize the kickoff, the placement, the height, so you can get coverage, so you can dictate field position. I mean, that's something we worked on, you know, and that's something that he had to work on because he wanted to, you know, in the beginning, everybody said, let's just kick him out. And I said, well, you know, something, we're, we're getting some real, real fast guys that are pretty big and they can cover. I said, well, if we kick that thing real high, <laughs> make them return it, and then we can, you know, gain another. You Because I know, I know it from my perspective 
as an offensive guy, when you get pinned inside the 20 or especially that 15, how you got to call things, you got to be careful. Because even you can't drop back, you get a holding call in, all of a sudden you're inside the five, now you're punting. I mean, all the things change. And uh, having him to be in a weapon as a, as a field goal kicker and a kickoff guy is tremendous. I, I can say he's, he's phenomenal, his work ethic. There's, it's not talent. I mean, he's talented. But guys, that guy puts the time and the effort in to being a great player. The work ethic, big time. Jimbo, how do you guys try to prepare when there's so many changes from uh, Syracuse offense? Yeah. Well, I mean, your quarterback, you, you just go back to what they do, and, and you think about they can change got three days to do what they're going to do, you know, and uh, we just got to go into research the history of what they've done and what other coordinators have done, what this court, what type of quarterback these guys are. I think they got two guys, one's a overthrower, one's a runner, and we have to prepare for all the packages. And it's kind of, I don't say it's routine, but it's kind of more the norm anymore because so many people are doing so many different things. And what we do with our guys can carry, you know, maybe some stuff you did at Clemson or stuff you did here. So they're getting so much of that run spread stuff plus pass, and they get a lot of pass stuff when they go against us and practice all the time. So from that standpoint, there's still a lot they can fall back on and have to make calls, see how the game's going. Jim, yeah, but what, what was up with Terrence Smith? Well, I had him out for team violation of team rules. He'll be back this week? Yes, he'll be back this week. With him out, can you speak to how Reggie North have played? I thought Reggie's played an outstanding game. I uh, still continue to get keys and come down here. We created a big turnover and got the fumble, and, and I did a real nice job. Tackled well. I did a very nice job in the game. As far as Lorenzo Featherston, I mean, you've seen the flash plays for, from him. How is he handling the all the extra time? And, and I think good. I, I think there's pressure, and I think a couple times, a couple times we lost contain in that game. You know, he got a little antsy and tried to dip under, and we lost contain. I mean, with those young guys, when you have the greatness, there's going to be a play or two. That, that's why you know, coach said, "Well, just throw him in there." Well, then you say, "Why that guy breaking contain?" Well, that's the same guy you want making that play. <laughs> I mean, it's part of growing up and knowing the consistency level. But you know, he, but here's the thing. When he comes off the field, what I love about Lorenzo, he can tell you exactly what happened. So he's seeing it, and I made a mistake. I should have, should have stayed out. And he can tell you right back. So I think he's a guy who corrects his mistakes, you know, quickly because he understands ball. And, then, of course, his big play potential and what he does. I mean, the guy's, the guy's going to be a heck of a player. Is Carlos Williams okay after seven? No, he's got an ankle. He's got an ankle that we'll have to judge and see. And I'll give you a report here in a minute on all the guys. If you want me to, I'll do it right now. Of course, Austin had the arm. And... Uh, He's out. Demarcus Christmas has a high ankle sprain. He'll be out. Uh, who else have we got here? All right. Uh, Carlos has the ankle. And Sean has a hand. He has a little uh, bone. Yeah, he has, a, has a, uh, a little bone in his hand that he may be out for a week or two. You think Carlos will probably be out this week? I'm, I would, if I would say, if I had to give a percentage, I would say yes. But, you know, just how the guys heal and what are out on their ankle. He'll be in a boot today. Well, how big of a challenge is it to get the team to start? Trey Marshall's still up and down, too, on his concussion. He still has to be cleared also. I'm sorry? I was saying, how big of a challenge to get the team to the offense to start early? Uh, it's not. Well, last week we went right down the field at NC State, and we moved the ball well here. And we, uh, every drive at, at uh, Oklahoma State, we scored the first drive. At uh, Citadel, we scored the first drive. Clemson, we scored the second with that. Uh, the fourth game, who was the fourth game? NC State, we scored the first drive. Last week we, we were moving the ball and had the turnover, you know. So you know, just one game that we haven't gotten that quick a starter. Who's going to be your backup quarterback? Uh, we'll have uh, John Franklin have a package, and we'll also and do some things. And Troy, and Troy Cook will be in there. He does an outstanding job, and then we'll keep JJ as an emergency guy as he, as he runs the offense. You talk about a, a legway. How, how I thought he played. I mean, you saw the athleticism and the flash on special teams and things, but you saw a little rust, keys and reads, but we know that. That's why I'm glad we got him back in as quick as we can to get back. We're starting to hit the middle point of our schedule where, you know, you have other injuries and attrition. You like to take some snaps off guys, you know, get that balance back. So, but I uh, thought he was solid in the game, made some plays, uh, very physical and ran around good. And, you know, it's a good thing his foot didn't react. Now he just got to get back into play, you know what I mean, getting his keys and his reads and all that stuff. On Mario's interception, or not sorry, PJ's interception, Mario was saying that being able to get the quarterback off his spot can help produce. <coughs> Affecting the quarterback, moving him off that spot. When I mean, you watch it from Man Manning to Brady or whoever, when you can make that quarterback move and he has to scramble those eyes moving and you lose sight of things, it's big. And I thought Mario was outstanding. He, to me, he was our defensive player of the week. I mean, he was outstanding and dominating on that side of the ball. You know, in the offense, we picked three guys. We picked uh, Hofield. Travis Rudolph and Herman Lane, because both guys, all three guys, as young freshmen, you say, all right, you guys want to play. Be ready when your number's called. Be ready when your number's called. And everybody, and they all say, I'm ready. Then all of a sudden it happens, and what happens? They're not ready. Hofield stepped in, 
played phenomenal. Travis Rudolph, or I mean, lots of the other receivers did, but those two young freshmen, when number 80 wasn't in the game in the second half and playing, they stepped up and played big, and Hopefield came in, did an outstanding job, and I thought, well, those three guys are our players of the game, and that's really encouraging to me. Is Hopefield, it seems like one of those typical tricky kind of guys, I mean, in terms of, like, wasn't super highly recruited? I'm going to tell you what, we liked, we had him in camp, and we really liked him. People don't realize he's 300 pounds. He got, you know, big, wide hips and legs and, and, and anchors in there, very strong. You know, he's probably... 15, 18 pounds bigger than than uh, Barron. You know what I mean? But different type of guy. You know, but I mean, anchors things very well. Solid. I, I think going to be a real, we, we felt really good. It, we liked it coming out of fall practice and where he's at right now. You know, we feel very good about where he's going to be and felt very comfortable we had to put him in. I just, but you never know until a guy goes in and, why well, he did a heck of a job. Was there ever a thought of shuffling the right line around or were you that's No, that's where we were going first. Way. We'll have other, we have, more, that's why you see us all the time working centers. In practice, you know, you'll see uh, Cam Irvin. You'll see, you know, we have all those guys snap all the time because that's a position you can. It's such a unique position. You have to have guys available to do that. So that was definitely our first choice in what we we're going to do. With, with Carlos likely out or probably out, good opportunity for Cook and Pender, I guess. Yeah, and I uh, also, but Ryan Green now is healthy. Right, so we'll get him back in the mix and have a great athlete there. Great player. You like what you've seen out of Pender and Pender? I have. I have. I think they're getting better each week. And, you know, what, what all those guys do, we, we get around them so much. And what I think all backs have to learn in college. And I think they're learning that now. They're so used to making big plays. And that's what we want to see. It's not what it's about. It's about being making that four and five and six yard run. Being able to hit that thing and not, you know, make it, instead of having a two yard run trying to make it 20, let me just take five. Let me take four. Let me take six. And, stay, and then all of a sudden, those big ones will pop. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm excited. Those guys are starting to do that because they're so used to running away from everybody in any field they've ever been on. And, and, of course, Pender did the other day and had a big one. But, you know, had a couple plays out in the flat. But those guys are really doing a good job of running between the tackles and being physical. Does Pender kind of have a knack for getting the end zone? A couple of his touchdown runs have been like one, two-yard runs. He does. He can bounce and slither and get skinny and has a and very natural. Very natural as a runner. Kind of. And I say snakish. In other words, you know, you think you're going to get a piece of him, he can twist or turn and you glance and he's still going forward when you hit him. You know what I'm saying? Marcus Allen was a lot like it. See, everybody talks about Marcus Allen's probably the best goal line runner in NFL history. And he wasn't just a giant. He was a tall, lean guy, but he could contort and squeeze, jump. You know what I mean? Just had that little something special on his goal line. So it's better than the next Marcus Allen? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a great one. Yeah. Jim, are you? You take my whole point wrong. So I thought that'd be a good one. <laughs> Are you concerned about all these things? It seems like there's just so many, like, Nicks and Nacks. There. there are. I mean, you're always concerned, but as a coach, you always plan for them. And, but they're, all, they're not pulls and tears. They're actually an ankle, a knee, an arm. You can't, I mean, like I say, sometimes the end when things break, when you run a bunch of big guys into each other, <laughs> things break sometimes. Sometimes they break more often than not. like turnovers. So when we go get some turnovers, well, just keep playing good defense and turnovers came. Well, injuries, you just, you, you train well, you heal, and you play good ball, and, you know, you hope and pray that those things don't happen. And most of them, like Barron, when he got, he got kicked is what happened. He, he actually was on the ground, made a cut block, and was getting up, and Cam was running by his guy, blocking his guy, and running to his guy to cut him off. As he raised up and stuck his arm up, he hit Cam's leg or knee right there, and just, that's how he brought me in. You know, that's just ball. I mean, when you get a bunch of big bodies falling around out there, that happens. But the thing I'm encouraged about is the depth in which we have. That's why you see us practice like we do. In other words, ones and threes on a field, twos and fours on a field in, in fall camp. In other words, so those freshmen, I say it all, remember at the beginning, yeah, how quick those freshmen develop will be the key to us because not only their ability to get on the field and make plays, but when guys get hurt and being ready to step up, even if it's not making a 100 yard game, but come there and give me 15 plays and be able to pick up a blitz and you know, make a run or a catch when you have to make it. And that's why we practice to get as many of these guys ready and play them as quickly as we can because the attrition of football now, and we're playing more and more games. And we keep adding games. Need to add players. <laughs> it's a lot of them. Yes, it, I mean, it doesn't worry me, but they just come. you got to deal with them and have them playing for them. Very different than last year. It is. I mean, sometimes the gods smile on you, sometimes they don't, you know. But that doesn't mean you still can't have success. you got to have a plan and... You know, everybody, everybody has attrition. A lot of upset this weekend, Coach. Uh, how important is it to keep the team focused? It is. Now, well, there's not a greater thing to point to, is it? 11 of the top 25, 5 of the top 8. I mean, some of them heavy favorites, some in big games. I mean, you know, I, I say this. what I say. Winning is hard, folks. Don't ever take it for granted. 
Don't ever be unsatisfied with winning and, and, and finding ways to overcome and adapt. In our, in our society, sometimes we want instant gratification. If things don't go like we want them to go or how we perceive them, there's got to be something wrong. No. Sometimes that's just the way it is. You know what I mean? And you got you got to keep growing and getting better and uh, have an appreciation. That's one thing. we The times we've faced that adversity, our kids have found a way to win, persevere, overcome, whether it's the offense, the defense, whoever it is. And that's, what I'm, that's why I'm... I'm, I'm very happy about our group of guys. I'm proud to coach them. I like the way they compete. You know, and the thing, now, do we, have, do we all have warts? Every team has warts. It's, it's, it's what's getting through the season. You have to keep knocking them off one at a time and keep progressing and, and going down the line. And, uh, and, and I think today, again, I think it's a product of our society. We multitask, do five things at once, but never focus on one. And, and I think it's a product of our society. They're not kids, not, I think in general. Like y'all, y'all are typing, twittering, doing this, doing that, calling for. I mean, y'all do it. I mean, in your world, in your in your media world, how many things are you really doing at once? How many times you just sit and work on the story and don't worry about what time it is and somebody's tweeting you and twittering you and I mean, you know, all that stuff all the time. And the kids are like that too. There's, that's why I talk about the clutter. The teams that can eliminate the clutter and stay focused on one task consistently. And uh, you know, there's no more of a great example than this. And plus, there's great parity. There's players everywhere. The second straight week, uh, Travis Rudolph makes a nice catch and, and really gets down the field. Just where is he at in his development? And uh, I've been very pleased. I, I think he's, he's – I mean, he's, he'll make little mistakes here and there. Sometimes you may not see him because of how we teach things or whatever, but, man, that guy, he's just growing. Him and Ehrman are really coming. And I think Juan Harrison's going to be a heck of a player too. Just, you know, he, they've been – systems a little more through it and things, and, and but he's just – those two guys are really coming on. Very pleased with Travis. He looks for sure like uh, no lingering effects from the foot or anything. No, he, now he. I think, I think the lingering effects in the beginning were more caution than anything. You know how you have to just trust something again that hey, it's all right. And then once he realized it was, he's taking off. When uh, when you guys came out of halftime, he was in the starting lineup. Is there a chance he would start if Rashad couldn't play? Or, or we'll have to wait and see, but there's a possibility. Yes, there's a possibility in that. And anyway, we'll, we know it, whether we're two wideouts, three wideouts, or whatever goes on. Tom D'Angelo, you have a question? I, I, I have to, Jim. Uh, Elliot threatened me if I didn't. All right. Hey, Tom. Um, I go back to Renzo, Jim. Most of those dominant defensive ends at FSU have always been around 6'3, 6'4. Mm-hmm. What, what does it. What does it tell? How much is it helping in 6'7"? What does that, what, what that advantage is that given? Well, I mean, I think length, I think vision. And now, if he couldn't bend, it could be a hindrance. You know what I mean? To be a, But this guy can bend. I mean, he, he's going vertical 38 inches. I mean, he's a big time. And then the wingspan of a 7'3 guy, not a 6'7 guy. That added to that. I mean, I, I think the width, the length, uh, the vision, and then the burst and athleticism, he has all those packages, man. And, 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 he's, and he don't think, he think he's thin. Well, that guy won't be, he's so fast. Tw- that's why he's so athletic. He's so fast twitch. His body's so hard, he explodes. And he's very strong. So, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, just three more inches of greatness. I mean, they'd all like to have it. If, they, if you could keep the same ability that you would have at 6'3 and go 6'7, you definitely take it. And that's what I see in him. Hey, got one more. Going over to uh, yeah, Bobo Wilson. Jim, but what did he learn from his experience over the summer and having to sit out a game? Did he give you a different guy from that? Yes, he is. He, he'd been with us. He had, as far as every time I'm with him, being on time, being where he's supposed to be, yes, sir, no, sir, and how quick it can be taken away from you and how realize how much he loved it. And that's why sometimes, that's why I take a guy, sometimes I say, well, suspend the guy and leave him home. I think it's more a punishment to dress him and stand him on the sideline, let him watch his teammates struggle, and, and, you know, and you can't be there and you let him down. You know what I'm saying? And I think that really got to him, and he understood that because he saw it. Him wanting to get in there with those guys, and uh, and like I say Bobo's a great young man. You know, he, he just made a mistake, and uh, he's got to learn from it. And hopefully, he will. When you look at that number two receiver position after the losses, uh, the, the, the departures last year over the over the summer, what was your what were you envisioning? Coming out of spring, I thought it would be him, just because I thought he finished up spring very well and was doing a great job, and. I felt very because of his ability being a slaughter, being an outside guy. A lot of times, little guys like he and Kermit. The unique thing about both of them, they're not just slot guys because they got great speed, so they can go outside. All those guys are quick, but uh, you know, I, I envision him being that guy because he can run with the ball and he, he's a very and he's a lot more physical than you think he is. He's a tough little sucker. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jason Staples. Do you have a question? Yep, got a question, uh, Coach. I've got a. Uh, I'm curious about, there's been a few times where uh, Winston has not seemed quite as sharp in terms of his ball placement in a couple of games so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and there's been also some stuff, you know, with some stumbling in the pocket and all that. 
Is there anything specifically at this point in the year that you guys are working on in terms of, you know, just getting some things polished up and, you know, was that maybe influenced by some of the time off, uh, you know, due to suspension no. or anything like that? I think it's what, more. What, what exactly are you guys doing with that? I think it's more influenced by the guys around him getting where they're supposed to be and how they're supposed to be there. And when you say placement, a placement could be from a route being carried too high and not flattened out or you know, vice versa. So, I mean, getting everybody on the same, I think, continue to grow at that. And, of course, he, and he's, he's let a couple balls fly. And we've had, you know, we had a couple protection issues. We've had some protection issues that he had to move on. But still, a guy's completing around 68% of his passes. He's thrown for about 320 yards a game. But the numbers are actually up from a year ago. He actually thrown for more yards and a higher percentage than he did a year ago. So, and as we continue to grow around him, I think, you know, I, that's, if, he, if he's our biggest problem, I'm going to be in great shape. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Thank you. How much has Franklin? I know. I know you said his future was probably a wide receiver, but how much has he been working? He comes back that? once or twice a week. And, and, will and, that be more this week? I yeah, he, we will be just just for you know, to make sure. And plus, and then being a wideout, so he still knows the offense. I think it's helped him. You know, what I mean, both ways when he goes both places. But, I mean, he's got a legitimate arm. Oh, he got a legitimate arm. He can run run like the wind. I mean, he's 10, 6, 10, 700 meter guy. Man. So from that standpoint, yes. Jimbo, last year the, the Syracuse player um, got hurt, and I, I know some saw him in the hospital. What was that like just to spend, I don't know if you were there an hour or whatever? Well, I mean, you just, uh, this game, we're all competitors. We're all, and I say, gladiators, those guys are, and great respect. And, and, and I, I knew he was from West Palm, and I didn't know he had some family who did come there. But, you know, I mean, if that was my son or my child, and he was hurt, and he happened to be left behind from his team and going there, then I'd want somebody that to at least go check on him and let him know. And, and I just wanted to know that how much we appreciate him as a competitor and as a fellow football player and respect what he does and make sure he was okay and let his family, because I know they were in West Palm, but you know, they had their mom and one of them had come up there and had been with him. But just wanted to, you know, you never want to see, I don't care I mean, if you want to win, how much you want to win, nothing's worth any young man ever being hurt or anything like that. And I would want to, you know, hope somebody do the same thing if that was my son somewhere. Whether it's, you know, a minute, 10 minutes, when something like that happens on the field, I think, oh, has that? Maybe jog your mindset and maybe take it. It does. You got you got to block it out. I hate to say that. You can't let yourself go there because you'll get caught up in it at that particular time in the game because you have responsibility to the other players. But it does affect. I mean, it does catch you now. It definitely does. And you don't no matter how long you're in it, you don't get over it. Coach, two kind of quiet games back to back for O'Leary. Um, is he frustrated at all? Are you frustrated? No. Not being we had a bunch of balls called to him. We had we had elected to go. We had a couple option routes. That one we went down the sideline to Rashad. We missed him. He had an option. Uh, the pick, you know, got to flatten that one out. We had a couple option routes inside. We had a scramble earlier. That, matter of fact, the ball that uh, Travis caught for a touchdown, we we thought that ball would go to Nick. We had about seven or eight things called, and that's just the way it goes. Sometimes the coverage goes that way, or reads, or we'll get pressure, and no big games again. He'll catch six or eight. I mean, we had a lot of things targeted to him. Sure, but overall, the offense, I think, with Jameis at quarterback, has scored on 19 of his last 24 drives or something. But it seems like because it's not quite living up to what last year is. It's, <laughs> Do you, do you, I mean, I don't know if you find that as a coach or do you understand people's perceptions of that? Oh, the I, I, I don't mean, and I don't mean this in any disregard. I don't care. And I, and I say that from this far. It's not the same team. And I say, that's what goes back to what I say. All of a sudden we perceive what something should be. And when it's not exactly like we perceive it, there's something wrong. Maybe there's nothing wrong. We're still scoring 19 out of 24 drives. How many teams in the country would love to do that? How many teams in the country would love to, every time he's been under center, what we score? 37, 37, 56, and 43. So, I mean, we keep scoring 37, 37, 56, and 43, we'll be in good shape. I mean, it doesn't look the same. You know, it's just like a boxer. Some people like style points. Other guys like guys that box. Some guys are defensive boxers. You know what I mean? And I'll point you. Other guys go knock you out. You like the Tyson theory. You know what I mean? But was Ali greater or Tyson greater or Joe Lewis greater or styles? I think that's where we're just a different style of offense. We still throw it. We still run it. And we're still very effective. You just don't see the – some of the, you know, the KB or the flash and dash at times, all the time. But now, I'm going to say this. As these young receivers keep progressing along with these older guys, and now that you can start to call things in a different perspective and feel comfortable with their one-on-one and throwing the ball like we did this weekend, you know, some of those things will come back. But we got to continue to run the ball and, and even do that better. Kind of along those lines, do you feel like the balance between running passes where you want it or you want to run I mean, I, I, I want to be able to do here, – here's what I would say. Yeah, I want balance. But I want to be able to do what they, what we can do, and be who we are in this. I always say running the ball. You got to run it in the red zone. You got to run it on the goal run. You got to run it in short yards. You got to run it the last four minutes of the game. Other than that, people can tell you when you can run it or not. And if you're one on one, you can throw it. And if, they're, and if they're going to tell you they're going to cover the pass, and you got to be able to run it. You got to have the balance. You got to be able to do both. You don't always have to do both, but you have to have the capabilities of doing both. And I think we do. 
your situational stats this year when the red zone, third down, how much you pay attention to those compared to maybe other type of figures? No, I, I'm, I'm big on that. I'm huge on that. Our red zone, I think we've only had one time. We haven't. That was the interception. And we're around, uh, I think for the last, I mean, we're about 78% touchdown for the last year and a half or two years. I think we're about 60 some right now, right at 70. I always felt if you're at least over 70%, that's outstanding in the red zone touchdown. And in our, you know, trying to always want to score 100% of the time. You know, short yards, goal line offense, points, turnovers. The third downs were in the last, you know, we've really come on here in the last couple of weeks on third down. We were 10 to 18 last week and uh, we're real high the week before, I think. 8-11. 8 11. Yeah, we're 8 of 11 there and, and 10 of 18 in the last week. So, you know, we've, we spent a lot of time on third down and red zone offense. And again, that goes back when I always say you play the game and you can play well and play situations bad. And what I mean, situations, red zone, third down, those type of things, and lose. Or you can play average football and play situations well a lot of times and win the game. You know, I mean, situation football is very critical, but you need to be good in both. When you're good in both, you'll have a lot of things in which we did a year ago. Could you compare um, Featherston to uh, my young Peter Bowyer? I wasn't around when Peter was here. I mean, I knew Peter is outstanding, but, but uh, Peter was I know, about 210 when he came in. Feathers a little better. They're taller. I mean, but I, if he if he's the kind of player Peter Bowyer is, we'll be in great shape. Peter Bowyer is a heck of a player and a heck of a guy. Any update on the Matthew Thomas situation? Yeah, I mean, uh, we're waiting, assuming you know, he should, as of right now, yeah, we're thinking in another week he should be ready to play another game. But we don't know that in time. When, when, when would you know that? That's a good question. <laughs> if I knew that, that day. <laughs> who, 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 who makes that, that The NCAA. Do you try and work when practice anymore this week? Yeah, we, we, have, we did a week ago. We've been working, we've been practicing, we've been running. We've been running. Up there in the, in the top two groups, getting him ready to, you know, for stamina and all those things. He's ready to play. What, what kind of difference? What, sorry, Ira. No, you go ahead. Go. What kind of difference would he make? What <laughs> oh, kind of y'all did not get when we worked together. Like, <laughs> things are different. What, uh, what kind of difference would he make to the defense? What does he make to the defense? Well, I, we'll wait and see. I mean, he's a he's a great athlete, but we've got some other great players. It ain't like he just walks in and changes everything. But you know, he's a guy, he's a tremendous special teams guy because he has range and size, hard to block and cover. He can run in space. He closes. He's so athletic, tremendous space player. You know, he can rush off the edge. He can blitz in the middle or play middle back or something. He brings a lot, and he has good ball skills. He can catch. See, so that's why he wore numbers. Everybody says he, he wore that number because he, you know, it's called him to play wide out when he was a little kid. That's what he did. They moved him linebacker in high school. He had great ball skills too. How did uh, Legway come out physically? Good, physically fine. I mean, that's what I was excited about. He'll keep knock that rust off as he plays, but very happy with the, you know, the, the, the no lingering effects from the foot. Chico, is this Probably a good, sore. <laughs> is this a good test? I mean, next week we know what's coming. Number five, Notre Dame, eight p.m. Game game day will probably be here to see how this team responds the week before a game like that. Well, I think it is. I mean, again, on the road. Anytime you go on the road. Look and, and everything. How far are we going? See, people don't put a put a timetable on that thing. The distance matters. You're, and I know it sounds silly, what it does. The farther you go, the harder it is. I mean, you go, you're going to a different part of the country. Different. You're on a plane longer. You're on this longer. You're on that longer. You're going to a dome. You're going to a team that you know plays great defense. You know that they're athletic. They're used to winning. I mean, you know, there, there's huge challenge. Being able to go win on the road is critical. Can we like, like to see the ACC a little bit more geographically? I mean, the, the maybe the divisions where you don't have to travel so much. I don't care about that. I really don't. It don't bother me. Go there. It's good. Don't ever get there. <laughs> you see parts of the country you don't. I, I don't get caught up in being geogra geographic. That's make it the best leg and get it, get it balanced out the right way. Were you bothered by the couple face masks you guys had? I mean, the Legway and, and Goldman both. Had yeah, I, 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 that was that was silly. That is, that, that, those are knucklehead penalties. You know what I mean? And I mean, sometimes you accidentally grab one, but there's no sense in in doing that if you can. And, and again, it, you got to avoid penalties. You got to avoid self-inflicted wounds that way. And you know that that shouldn't happen. Should never happen. How do penalties kind of affect the team? Because some teams seem to succeed with a high amount of penalties, and for other teams, it's critical. To Usually it depends on how talented they are. <laughs> I'm serious. Because what I call erasers. That's one of the things we could do last year. You absorb penalties on offense. You had so many big play potential players, they could erase those yards. You know what I'm saying? And on defense, could you have a guy, okay, he gets a big penalty, can somebody now get a sack or a pick or something like that? You know, certain guys you got to play perfectly. You know, you, it depends on, to me, and, and, and the Raiders used to be like that. You know, see, I mean, I've been on great Florida State for history of time. All the great teams were very highly penalized teams. 
all during the run of the dynasty. If you go back and look at it, they were highly penalized teams. And but usually so talented they could easily make up for plays and things. And you you know, because you for aggression, you you gotta teach aggression, you gotta teach being that way, but at the same time you're just going, go as hard as you can, be nasty, be tough, go but don't make a penalty, don't make a mistake, don't do this. I mean, that's a hard thing to do. You know what I'm saying? And there's a fine line and you gotta be able to coach it that way, but then you gotta be able to adapt and, and if you do that, you gotta be able to overcome them. And usually athletically gifted teams are ones that can do that. I've got to be athletically gifted and don't make a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, in a first shot can't go Bobo return punts? Yes. Yes. Anything else? We're good. Thank you guys. Thanks.